we fail to hear someone, we can just ask them to repeat. Okay, we are live. Apologies for the delay, but as you can potentially be seeing right now, I certainly am. Some of us are stiff and uh, <laughs> various other things because our latency is terrible to tonight. That. Yes, it's a, the bandwidth. There are some bandwidth issues. Yeah, so bear with us, but hopefully it should iron itself out. Um, and over to the slightly blurry GM. Um, oh, why? Very cool. It's because the data is having to go out to Europe so that in order to be processed <laughs> by Google servers and we put customs controls in. <laughs> yes, well, we won't get any uh, any any Google European servers after around thirty first. So. So yes, welcome to the next episode of Signs Importance, a D and D fifth egg game, um, with my fine players. Um, so I'm going to ask them to introduce the characters, starting with Jason. Oh, your fine players. My this fine players. Step up. Well, here's a fine character for you. I'm playing Rorik Kraghoff, uh, and uh, that sounded really posh, and he's not very posh. So that was terrible. That was a terrible start. Uh, but I'm playing a half dwarf. Um, who uh, hails from the Craghearth clan up in the hills. And uh, he has kind of landed himself with these people and uh, got wrapped up in this tyrannical plot. Um, and uh, at the moment, he is, he is enjoying doing, doing good because that's what he's all about, as opposed to doing things for honour. He does it for the good of mankind instead. Very noble for him, of him. Um, next is Jay. Okay, I'm playing um, <clears throat> Valen Crowstar, I'm a wild elf, uh, after adventure. I am nowhere thief. Um, I, I, am, <laughs> I, uh, I don't particularly like uh, human nobles so much, really. I'm very much a, uh, I am very much a wild elf. I very much live in the dream, like nature. And try to uh, keep the local wealthy aristocracy and so forth, which is why I have a problem with all this uh, emperor business to deal with at the moment. Excellent. So, uh, next in line, in, if you would please. Yes. So, we are the artist. I got it. I'm getting at least 45% of that. I would say 43.4. <laughs> Sorry, you're breaking up really badly, Ian. So, no. It was fine just before you could go. <laughs> who diminished order. Probably taking a back seat in this system. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a you sound like a robot with a York traction. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, Becky. Uh, I, I'm sure I am, Mister. I don't think my character is really worthy of its own introduction. I mean, and I'm just... I'm, I'm, just the pet of the, the group, surely. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go back to the background. Ah, uh, yes, the player with no name. Well, the character with no name, shall we say. Um, would anyone look for a point of inspiration um, like to uh, update us on what's happening? I do remember. Ooh. But no. <laughs> we went and did uh, Sabeo's backstory in a keep, and there was an arch chancellor who had to be hanged. Thank so you. <laughs> Thank you for not saying hung. <laughs> yes. So um, he was hanged from. I th oh no, we didn't hang him from the top of the tower in the end. Anyway, there was no, some role playing idea. bits. There were some role playing bits and there was fireballs, so it's a good session. Go check it out. Yes, there was some uh, some some treachery going on in um, Sabayor's background. 
Which you managed to sort out. Uh, he's now Lord Commander, there you are. Who did we hang from a tower? We hung someone from a tower. Hung. <laughs> of how we did hang someone from a tower, didn't we? You, you hanged him in the stables, I believe. Yeah. Oh, oh, did we, uh, sent up a hang... horse. Okay. That's right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't catch any of that. I'm sorry, Ian. I shall walk out and come back in again. Okay, okay. It's almost like a Star Wars language, isn't it? <laughs> speak. Speak. I speak. Ah, that's, that's a bit better. better. So yes, you um, you sorted this bit with uh, uh, at the at the keep, and you decided to um, head north past the nearest town, Boston, uh, back towards Radcliffe, where you actually started the game eight or nine episodes ago. So uh, yes, they we find you on the road um, past Boston. It's it's slowly disappearing behind you. Um, you're on horseback. Um, you've still got the stolen horses you had, and you, you've probably got some pack animals if you need them. Um, and you're heading towards uh, the south gate of Radcliffe. Okay. What would you, uh, how, how are you travelling? Are you... Apparently on horseback. Yeah, but are you travelling openly, or are you concealing who you are? Well... If I recall correctly, we travelled west, way out of line of the people pursuing us, and then we're going to go north. Yes, you did. Yeah, up to the old lady. So we shouldn't, in theory, be that. Uh, like our pursuers shouldn't be, shouldn't know where to look for us at the moment. So I, I don't think we need to worry too much about concealing who we are. I mean. Um, if they, it's entirely possible that news might get back to them later. But I mean, we can't really hide our racial disposition and the size of our group. No. So I think we're okay. We're not going to get hunted. It's just they will eventually find out where we've been. Okay. Okay. So you're going to be on the road a couple of days from Boston to um, to Radcliffe. And as you know, you've been there before. Radcliffe's a big town. It's the second city of the Empire. But we're we'll, we'll, we'll going to the old, uh, that, that crazy religious woman. Um, oh, yeah. We're going to be the Druid. mother. The mother, yeah. Uh, but if you go directly north from Boston, you know, you, you, what you'll do is you'll hit... Um, can I share? Let me share the screen a second. Okay. I'm going to share the screen. No, how do I do this? Uh, share screen. Um, Again, oh, reflection in your glasses is too difficult to see. If you I, no, I don't do this very often. <laughs> uh, so I have to put it back over there, I suppose. Um, I don't want you to see that bit yet. So I'm going to extend that over and pull that down. So that one. It's like listening to somebody using a computer for the first time. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So you're here. Where, where's that? Can you see it? No. Nope. <laughs> ah, there, All we right. go. there we go. Oh, this is a different map. You can't just change the map on us. Of course we're going to go the when you do that. You moved. <laughs> <laughs> You've come to... You landed here originally, you went up the river to Huthwaite, you went down to the temple, and then you've come back over the mountains, you've gone west, and then up to Boston. All right. Oh, all right. The Radcliffe, the starting place, Huthwaite's yeah. the capital. Yeah. yeah. So where are you heading for the, the old ladies over here somewhere? Yeah. Right. So uh, what we're going to do, I guess, is travel northeast. Nobody will expect that. You're just going to go straight that way. 
Oh, why not? Because if we go north up the road, we're heading towards major settlements and more prying eyes. Mm. Whereas if we head northeast up to the river... Yeah, easily, you can easily cross somewhere, I'm sure. I agree, that makes sense. Oh, judging by your last crossing, if you've got enough cash. <laughs> Is it 21 gold to cross, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, that's what you're up to. So you're going to go northeast and you're heading across country, effectively. Yeah. Okay. Well, so you... Country lanes and shows now, but yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's going to, that's going to take considerably longer. It's not going to be, uh, there's no direct route to where you want to go. So you'll be um, uh, several days um, traveling to the river. Uh, you'll be picking up lodgings in, in various small villages and maybe even farms occasionally, trying to uh, trying to uh, make your way um, reasonably quietly up through the country. Um, and most of this now is farmland. This is the uh, this is sort of the breadbasket of the of the of the country. This is where all the food is grown. Um, but you can you can reach the river without any real event, and uh, we'll say within within uh, four days you're standing on the banks of the Erie, Excellent. waiting to cross, looking for a way to cross. Let's find a barge. I mean, if you want to wait on the southern bank long enough, you, a barge will pass. So, yeah, we could head to that inn that we saw where we crossed previously. <laughs> uh, yes, but they'll probably remember people like us. And the fact we, is that the same place we got them over to? We didn't pay. Yeah, we might even be, might be made to give them another twenty-one gold at this rate. <laughs> so, yeah, after a couple of hours waiting, you a barge will pass. We're in a fairly remote area, right? Sorry? Are we in a fairly remote area right now? You are, yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay waiting there. So a barge will pass and you can hail, hail them over. And uh, you'll show back, uh, you know, what do you want? Oh, we need to cross this river. What do you think? Uh, have you got any? Have you got any money on you? <laughs> it's a bit cheeky, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not doing it for nothing. I hold up two gold coins. Oh, he rubs his hands. Lovely. Yes, I'll be over right away, and uh, they will go stop their travel and and, and pull in uh, a little bit upstream um, on the on the southern bank for you. And you're saying, uh, well, you want to go straight across, or you want to go up and down the river? What do you want to do? We just want to cross the river. Uh, so, have you got pack horses with you? We've got right. horses, yes. Just your own, or pack horses as well? Uh, the king's horses, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> you got one, one horse each, then. Mm. Um, uh, sorry, Jay. We had extra pack horses, didn't we? You, you, you had a horse each, didn't you? Yes. We had a couple of extra ones, didn't we, or something, I think? Well, that's what I'm saying. Do you have pack horses with you? They weren't pack horses, just extra. <laughs> but we might have left them behind, I can't remember now. There's yeah, but I mean, I don't know if you brought them all with you, because obviously that's going to be a lot of um, a lot of horses to be trailing, and you're going to stand there even more. Yeah. You and yeah. Like... Just have the one riding horse each. So uh, he's quite happy to accept the two gold for crossing the river. Well, well hang on. I, I give him a gold coin and I ask for the change. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I've got some coins. I, I'm not going to do it for, do it for that now. Is it, sorry, but what, what is it you're charging us to cross the river? Two gold coins. The two gold coins, yeah, hold up. I'll do it for that. Oh, sorry, you asked if we had any money. <laughs> it was just answering the question. I'm sorry, I didn't quite follow. Cat, it's fine. Well, and I, I give the two gold coins. 
Oh, right, yeah, we'll get some, uh, he shakes to his, his, his deck crew and he'll, he'll get some planks off the, off the boat down to the riverbank. One uh, day we'll pay a fair wage for crossing a river. <laughs> <laughs> it's an improvement from last time. Vast improvement from last time. Yes, <laughs> yes it is. So, um, he'll, he'll put some planks out so you can lead your horses up the, uh, up, up, up onto the barge. Mm-hmm. And um, once you're once you're on the barge, it's it's only it's a couple of minutes to get it manoeuvred out into the river and then over to the other side. And uh, dismounting the barge is a very similar sort of process to uh, getting your horses on it. So you can uh, you you mount up on your horses again. Do you remember? If you could do me a uh, sort of uh, a navigation or a tracking role to find out where you're going. Survival then, presumably. Survival? Hmm. Well, that's the nearest thing to what you're asking that I can think of. Yeah, I think, I think it's survival, survival for tracking. Yeah, it's no tracking, it's under investigation. Uh, that is under tracking under... Or nature. Okay. Yeah, you have to do a do a do a survival roll then for whether you can you can well you can locate this this shrine you're looking for. Well, I got eight, so I wasn't paying much attention. Sorry, eleven modified. My bad. Uh, eleven. So yeah. Survival. If you're going for survival here. Mm-hmm. If the if it's your favourite terrain, though, you'd have advantage, Ooh. wouldn't you? Uh, well, eighteen, so that's twenty. Survival. Thirteen. That's pretty good. That might be enough. Well, obviously, Valian has sort of like uh, when he was travelling on the boat, he he'd obviously paid a lot of attention to the scenery around him, and he sort of knows. Uh, he sort of thinks he knows where he is roughly. Uh, in in relation to to the shrine you're looking for, and he leads you off, um, still heading uh, a northeasterly direction. Um, the the land up this side is 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 a lot different to uh, the southern side. There's there's a lot fewer farms. It's a lot rougher. Uh, it's a lot more barren. Um, and soon you see um, a hill rising in front of you. And as you crest that hill, you see there's the forest. Um, between the two hills that you passed through previously, and beyond that, you can see the the ruined temple. Okay, so my is there, I guess. So, what, what is it you doing? You're just approaching the temple, and, and... yeah, yeah just ride up to it. You can ride up to it, same as you did before. There's the broken arch that's outside, um, and uh, there's the the, the Weed covered courtyard inside, stone court, and the temple building standing just a little way inside with its doors ajar. Well, let's hope she's at home. So, how are you going to approach? Well, well, it's... <laughs> yeah, um, without any. Pomp or circumstances turn up, dismount. Are you knocking on the door before you go in, or are you just pushing your way in, or what did the um, lady Cressida do when we when we arrived originally? She just entered. I yeah. suggest we enter, but maybe with a bit of dignity. I'm sorry, I'm confused. Are we struggling to get through an open door? How are you going to do it? Or are you just walking through? Yeah, I'm just walking through. At the moment, you're making decisions like a Labour Party. <laughs> well, we're not for Ouch. <laughs> so, you're just walking in. Yes. <laughs> Inside it is dark as it was in the last time. Still smoke, still hanging in the ha- in the air. 
um, we're going to do bundles like sitting in front of the fire, almost in exactly the same sort of a picture as you as you as you remember from the first visit. Sorry, you cut out for me. The scene is almost exactly as you remember from the first visit. You, you cut out for me. All oh, right, what the with the mother still in there? Yes, there's a, there's a big pile of rags sitting in front of the fire, and it looks exactly the same as as you originally saw it. It doesn't look like any time has passed at all since you, you were in the place last time. Okay. I'm going to look to Lord Commander Sir Bale. Yes. Should I? Or are you? Um, I shall step forward. Um, my lady. Uh, what do you want? We seek um, information, uh, guidance, actually. You were here before. You seem to find your way. We did. We, we have encountered um, problems, and we have found something which may be of interest to you. Interest. What, what have you found? Thing that fell from the sky. Do you find a star? You did. It here. Mm, is that a bad thing? Yes. Ah. I start backing away. <laughs> in what way? Bad. For everyone. For everyone, everyone, everywhere, everyone. I don't think she's very happy we brought it. Well, this is where we need the guidance. What should we do with it? No, no, I know what to do. Where it's how to do it. Where is my daughter? I'm here, Mum. <laughs> she actually, she actually called, she called Chris as a daughter. She called you sister. Oh, wait. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can contact her and bring her in on the conversation, but it's important you understand. It's important that we destroy this thing. Destroy? You want to destroy the star? Many have tried, none have failed, none have achieved it. You are <laughs> going to fail. Fail, you know? fantastic. You're going to fail <clears throat> this. What do you know of well, no, look, this, this star has caused, brings out everyone's avarice. Not everyone's, just some, just, just the sum. And at that she glances over towards uh, Rorik. The sun should not hold it. I just look back at her as though I completely understand her and I just stay calm. And uh, she looks towards uh, Valen and she says, uh, and you must be, and it must be protected from others. Uh. But if we can't use it for fear of giving in to the avarice of it, and if we can't protect it because we only live so long and people will chase us and eventually will fail, then the only other option is to destroy it. But you cannot destroy the one with the other. Yes, but assuming we can do that, what is the ritual? Where do we find it? Assume we have both. Uh, you go to the gate, you place the stones in the gate, 
but you do not place them correctly. What is the gate? The gate, uh, the portal to for the gods. Portal to the gods. Where? Where is this thing? Um, going back a bit, if you remember, there was a round, almost like I think it was made out to be like a like a, like a stargate gateway outside carved into the wall with the two uh -huh. niches that were solid. Yep. Oh, what, at this temple? Yes. Yeah. Right. One side. Is this the only place it can be destroyed? Uh, there are others. This is the closest. What's the next closest? Uh, in the far east, there is a gateway. And it, does it look the same? Uh, the, the, uh, I think it looks the same. Do um, you know the name of the place? The place is... Uh... <laughs> you can put me out um... <laughs> oh, I like to have a backup damn. plan, you see. <laughs> it's no good just having a plan, eh? <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the place is called Yana. Uh, that is a dangerous journey. You go, sister. I'm sorry, sorry, I was taking a note. Second. That's a dangerous journey. Will you go, sister? I hope not. I hope it won't be necessary. Well, we've succeeded so far. But if you destroy the stones, the second one you need. Could we leave this one in your keeping while we acquire the other? She didn't uh, sound particularly I fond of not. Do not give it to me. Is there anybody at Yana who will guard it there? We may find the monks at Yana who will, will guard it as well as they can. But uh, that is a, a big thing to ask of anyone. We can guard it. We just need to get the other one and get it back here. Thank you, sister. Why? Why do you? Why do you wish to destroy the stones and not bring back the gods? Well, why do you want the gods to return? To heal the world. To heal? What from? From from decay. I don't know if you've noticed, but most of the buildings and stuff were not built by gods. <laughs> the gods have gone been gone a long time. I mean, yeah, I mean this place is a bit rough. I was saying, looking around, but if you actually leave here and actually go out down the road a bit, you'll actually notice there's some actual intact buildings. <laughs> but decay is the order of all things. Without decay, there can be no life after it. Ah, but the gods can stop that. It can change it. Mm. How do they stop it, though, isn't it? By destroying everything so there's no more decay. Gods do their own thing, not what we will them to. So, to destroy it is your will? Yes. Then you are on a dangerous path. Lots, uh, many will want to stop you. Many will want this power. 
even the stone you have is dangerous. I know. You have the red star, you need to find the green star. I know where it is. It will not give itself up easily. I know, it's in the most heavily guarded place in the world. <laughs> so, what can I, more can I do for you? You've just made your decisions. Well, I don't think there's another choice, is there? Destroy them or use them? We are not using them. You say you won't use them. Not yet. But the time will come. So are people like you keep saying. Well, thank you for your advice, uh, Mother. And she, she, she sort of looks up at you. Mother, do I, do I know you? Thank you, sister. It was a term of endearment. And she, she nods and says, sister. Do you speak to your grandson at all? I have no grandson. No sons, no grandsons. Your daughter's son. I don't think she's the actual daughter. Or biologically, I don't. No, wait, the son isn't the actual son. Lady Cressida isn't the biological mother of the Emperor. No, stepmother. Stepmother. Do you speak to your step-grandchild at all? <laughs> I have no grandchild. You have no step-grandchild? I have no grandchild. Do you have any contact with the Emperor? No. Okay. Will you return the stone to my daughter or sister? I cannot completely trust your daughter. I fear she will use the stones for power. She can be trusted to do what she thinks is right. And what she thinks is right is unfortunately the greater influence of her family and her bloodline over the Empire. As do we all. As you understand, I can't do that. None of us can. In that case, you must give the stone to me after all. No. Because I also know what you would have with it. I don't believe you do. You must give the stone to me. I will deal with it from now on. You are free from your obligation. Uh, I think not. I am going to uh, widen my eyes, <laughs> blink a few times, and purr, uh, giving off my uh, innate hypnotic gaze. Uh, she needs to do a wisdom save to a DC of 15. 15. 
Okay, she's felt, isn't he? <laughs> okay, so um, she is uh, charmed just for one turn. Her speed is zero, and she's visibly dazed. Um, and I can maintain it multiple turns by using an action and staying with within five feet. I'm going to hand the pouch with the stone to Lord Commander Sabeo. I say, leave the room. I've got this one. Thank you. Come. We must make and plans I, for retrieving the second. And I and I keep my big eyes on her, purring while she's dazed until everyone's out the room. And she sits she sits on the floor and she's slightly just like right, just rocking a bit. And when they're all gone by a few minutes, I'll say the stone is long out of your grasp now and I release my big eyes, blink a few times and turn to walk out. <laughs> the stone is, uh, before you leave, she says, the stone is not beyond my grasp. What do you mean? She says, um, I can still reach it. How? Easily. Explain. And oh dear. she disappears. <laughs> I am. Um, um, I'm. I'm, I'm going to use my uh, uh, feline agility to move double speed. It means I have to move no speed next turn. But uh, what I want to do is to sprint up to catch up with everyone because um, I'm expecting her to kind of be there. So I, I move at uh, 120 foot this round to catch back up with okay. everyone. What they must have not stopped where they've gone. Come Sorry? Back, to the, back to the horses, <coughs> mounted up. And I guess we'll move some way away, perhaps heading back towards the river. Uh, we'll be chatting about how we expect to retrieve the, the second one, the second eye. Okay, so, so you're at the moment, you're in the trees, heading back towards the river. You, you, you came on the first one. Uh, and you can hear, yeah, uh, you can hear um, cat on a horse stepping behind you. Yeah, we'll slow down. It's brushing up to you. It's been a hurry. Cut. Easy now. You, you're out of her reach. No. She. Check the stone. Is it still with you? That's what check. Instead of my jacket, it's tunic. Uh, it's still in your jacket, tunic, yes. Good. Let's see. Uh, After my as you um, as you start moving again towards uh, towards the river, um, you notice that uh, the light level around you seems to be getting darker. Yes, this is. I think this is her. She's doing something. And um, who? Hey, a new role to get here, didn't you? Uh, you me? So I, you're, you're all over the place at the moment. I can't understand half what you're saying. I'm sorry. It's the same as that. That's what you sound like. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I roll survival to get to find out. Okay. So you notice that the path seems to be closing in, trees seem to be closing in around you a lot narrower than when you first came. Right. It's worth me dropping out and trying to reconnect. You definitely try that. You are a bit, I mean, your in your video is very kind of slow. And... Okay. I'll try this. Well, it's YouTube is saying the stream is excellent, so it must just be Google Hangouts. Yeah. <clears throat> well, if YouTube is lying. Yeah, could be that. Has that made any difference? Yeah. Oh, yes. Good. 
So yeah, you notice the trees seem to be, uh, from what you remember on your first journey to the temple back, the trees, the path seems to be a lot narrower, the trees are hemming you in a lot more. Okay, I draw my sword. This is natural, is it? As a, as a wild elf who tends to live a lot of time in, spends a lot of time in forests, I'm guessing this isn't normal. No, you don't think this is normal, no. Okay, I'm gonna uh, yeah get my bow ready. Okay, um, as you do that, you see the the path ahead of you just sort of closes off. You cannot see uh, the blue patch of sky in the distance anymore. Right, so now we're pretty much trapped almost. Um, if I walk towards it, does it not reopen or anything? Does it stay? It doesn't. No, there seems to be trees in the way now. The path doesn't seem to actually go anywhere. I can move amongst the trees. You can move amongst the trees, and you know it just seems like you're 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 in a wood off a path, moving through wood. So basically, it's an ineffective attempt to lock us in when we could just actually move amongst the trees and walk back onto the path again from the other side. Whereas a wall would have been better. Or something. So it's not actually a wall, no. No. So it's just trees are like growing on the path, or appearing on the path. Alright, okay. I'm not worried about that. We can still get past all so not a problem. I sort of like the idea that what it what it indicates. Uh, so are you moving on past the trees? <coughs> I don't know. Do you wanna hang around and see what happens or are we gonna head off? If well, you can go to we're going in the right direction. Let's go through the tree field. Try and squeeze Just through. Be, Okay, so yeah, you can squeeze through. Very aware. I mean, you can you can even still stay mounted if you need to. Yeah, you, you can't squeeze through. Um, I'll go ahead. After you pat, after you leave the path and you actually start moving amongst the trees, can you all do me a dexterity saving throw, please? Or if all else fails, we go up to the trees. Ooh, sixteen. Uh, Twenty-one again. Um, how much damage do I take? <laughs> what, what, did, what did you get? Seven. Ooh. Okay. I got, I got 13 is enough. Okay, so with a shriek, you hear you, you hear from behind you, you look behind you and, and cat's horse is empty. A tree seems to have a branch seems to have swooped there down and it's lifted you completely out of your out of your horse off your oh, horse fuck. and just sort of now up in the tree branch uh, and the same has happened to say be worse a split second later uh, i do not know how to talk to trees but if you can hear me, tree you need to understand this you need to put him down <laughs> i thought you were going to say fireball <laughs> um Sir Bay, what, what you what you you suddenly feel um, something tapping all over you, and you, as you look down, you can see the sort of branches are sort of like almost pass, passing you down, like in a search. Oh, uh, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Um, can I? It's an action, but it, its duration is instantaneous. I I can fling an object that weighs up to five pounds, uh, up to ninety feet in any direction. So, um, spell, right? It's, 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 it's first level spell. So, um, as soon as the uh, as soon as the tree grabs the stone or or it reveals it, I want to fling it using my catapult spell down to the ground amongst the um, the, the rest of the party because it's purely somatic. So I, you know, a little gesture with my hand and it will go. Oh, okay. So you could you could but, something from uh, somewhere else, you mean? Yeah, but the target needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. I would try that. Oh no, no, the target that gets hit. Hang on, choose one object. Wait to open. Oh, that isn't worn or being carried. Fuck, doesn't work because <laughs> it's being carried. What if? What if? Ah! The if a bear grabs it, drops it because then it's not worn or being carried. It's being dropped. I assumed he was being restrained. 
Uh, well, I think he's been held and he's been patted down, yeah. And, and, and yeah. These, these branches, these twigs are sort of going in out of your clothes and inside your armor. Oh, cracks in your armor. But it's it's little twigs that are doing this, right? <clears throat> it's the tree, yeah. Twigs, branches. Twigs and branches. Okay. Do I have any movement whatsoever? Can I break? You can struggle. How <laughs> high up are they? Okay. They are. Okay. So. Cat is about 20 feet in the air, and Sir Bayor uh, hasn't been lifted quite so far because he's a little bit heavier, so he's about cool. 15 feet. Right, okay. I want to, be, before he lifted any higher, I want to try and potentially grab onto his branch, if I can, or at least start climbing up towards him. So are you going to stand in your saddle, or are you actually climbing the tree? No, no, I'm going to actually climb the tree. I'm oh, okay. I'm going the horse. Okay, so you, you um, dismount and run over and, and start climbing the tree. Uh, I'm going to ready my bow, and as soon as I see a branch, take that stone out of Sir Bayor's jacket or whatever he's, wherever he's carrying it. I'm going to shoot the branch. I'm going to forewarn Cat first to be ready for the spell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to shoot the branch. There's teamwork for you. Of course, I may actually shoot Sir Bayor, but... Um... Right. <clears throat> also... Uh, Mouse, if you can recover that stone from the tree, do so now. <laughs> so, sending off my familiar to climb up the scamper over, basically. Right, I shall try to break free okay, while so they're all doing that. Can, as you start climbing the tree, uh, Rorik, the, uh, the, the tree starts actually moving like it's trying to dislodge you. So can you do, do me an athletics roll? Certainly. 17. Oh, 17. Yeah, okay, you manage to cling on, cling on to the tree as it's sort of shaking and moving. Uh, and you seem to have a good enough handhold to um, to keep yourself on the tree. So you sort of make it up to the branch where our Serpayor is. Cat, uh, while while the, you're trapped up in the tree, it seems to be gripping you as well, but it doesn't seem to be searching you as much. Mm. Okay. Um, Serpayor, can you roll me a... Let me see. Are you fighting against this? Yep. Okay, if you can do me a strength saving rope, roll, please. Oh my god. That's full one. Okay. Oh. Your, 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 your struggles are pretty feeble against the tree. Um, it's, it seems strong, and you seem to be wedged pretty fast now. It's, it's, it's got a good grip on you. You're not going anywhere. Um, suddenly, uh, one of the branches whips away fairly quickly from, from your from your upper body area and moves away. Do I know it's got the stone? You can see a small bag hanging by a string as it moves away from, from on, hanging on a twig. Is that where the stone was? Mm. Yeah. Right, I'll shoot the branch. Okay, if you can do me a sh uh, shooting roll, please. Twing, right. twing. twing. My, 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 my attack bonus is a, as a nine, so I've only got a roll. Uh, it's great deal. Oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> Famous last five. I rolled a five. Makes it a 14. Okay, you don't quite hit oh, B -O. You don't quite hit B.O.R., but the... the the arrow fuzz into the branch just by his head. Well. <laughs> oh, I've got an idea. Good job. Okay. Uh, so, Mouse uh, is... I'm going to cast Catapult on Mouse. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to send Mouse to that branch. <laughs> 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 Because I think he weighs less than five pounds. Hopefully he won't splat. Um, the object flies. I mean... It's up to the GM whether he allows it, because it says use one object weighing one to five pounds. But it's a willing recipient that weighs less than five pounds, so you tell me. I'll allow that. I'll allow it. Okay. The object flies in a straight line up to 90 feet in the direction you choose before falling to the ground, stopping early if it impacts against a solid surface. If the object <laughs> would strike a creature, in this case a, a living tree's branch, 
that creature must make a dexterity saving throw. On a failed save, the object strikes the target and stops moving. In either case, both the object and the creature or solid surface take 3d8 bludgeoning damage. I am trying to aim this at the bag with the stone in. Um, it's going to kill poor mouse, but that's okay. I can summon him back. It's all eternal. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, um, don't forget that you've got inspiration as well, Becky. From I will use my inspiration. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, which means it's got a, this tree has to make a dexterity saving throw at disadvantage with a DC of fifteen. That was a twelve. Mouse strikes the stone, <laughs> the back of the stone, um, doing 3d8 damage to aforementioned bag, which is 8 plus 8 plus 6. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, 22 uh, damage. So the, you, to the bag? To the bag, yeah. Okay. So the, the what happens is the mouse, it must, it must be travelling pretty fast then. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can fly! For a short time. Um, and it hits the, hits the bag quite hard and it breaks the string. And the bag falls with the mouse. <laughs> and hits the ground on the, hits Don't worry, he's in Valhalla. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, immediately, immediately the, um, the the bag falls. Immediately the bag hits the ground. Uh, the the branches stop moving, and so they all you fall. <laughs> can I try and grab him? Uh, that was a sheer reaction. You can, yeah. And I'll shout, bail in the stone. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna grab the stone. But cat, you also you you also released as well. Okay. I can't catch both of you. Uh, so from that height, that's 2d6 falling damage, yeah? Yeah. Can't you just spend a life? <laughs> yes, this game tracks my life in hit points, all nine of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you do you do a, um, what's that, a dex roll? I suppose to see if you can catch you. What's it? Uh... Is that a straight X or a saving throw? I was talking to Rorik about catching. Oh, sorry. Catching. Yeah, Dexter, yeah. Uh, 14. 14. Uh, you're saying? 14. Okay, you managed to just grab him by one hand as he falls past you, holding onto the tree with the other. And... Swings him into the bowl of the tree. Failing, you rush over and you can actually get to the bag that's on the ground um, pretty quickly. Um, you're almost there when you see uh, the ground actually just spring up and roots sort of come up waving like this can i all right as i as i see that can i leap over the thing by at the same time grabbing the so i do a somersault over the actual roots going up grabbing it with one hand acrobatics and I roll, oh, yeah. uh, and i rolled ooh, hello um 19 uh, 27. okay so you can you sort of leap uh rolling in the air so you're upside down as you as you, as you pivot through the air and you reach down and you pick up the bag from the clutches of the of the roots that are springing up and you just sort of like land on your feet running yeah leap on my horse right off into the sunset <laughs> <laughs> ah my plan is what <laughs> so going quick. the wrong way <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm off. You're going west. You should be going east. What are you doing? Are you actually going to jump on your horse and ride it off? Or are you waiting for the others? Or what's the well, other? Well, for the others, am I? You can have yeah, the others. <laughs> well, well, we'll catch up with you. Oh, okay then. I'll uh, I'll pull all the horses and ride off. As you move towards your horses, you can see that the trees are again reaching down towards you. Yeah, I need to get out of this forest, I think, whilst I've still got this thing. So, um, so, I think getting out of here as quick as possible is the ultimate goal. Uh, 
as you as you run towards your horse, can you do me a short second? <laughs> you, you dodgy weed. <laughs> I'm pretty good at decks. Uh, so you're not very good at decks. I'm pretty good at decks. <laughs> uh, Fifteen. So that's twenty-three. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. So you make it to your horse, and you can mount quite easily. Keep you're keeping low and ducking in the old branch that comes towards you. You can give your horse a kick, and it springs forward. Yeah, I need to get out of these trees and get by the river again, and so uh, I'll wait for him there. Okay. So, I mean, uh, after a short time, you will burst out of the trees, and there's a bit of a plain. There's a bit of a bit of a grassland between you and the river. So, yeah, I want to get myself away from. Okay. That looks remotely like. So, you, you others, what, what are you going to do as you um, as you've passed the stone over? The trees don't show so much interest in you anymore, mm -hmm. and you're put, you're free to get your horses and and mount. Yeah. Um, who, okay. wound, who wounded you, Cat? Uh, it's all right. It's fine. Um, I, what I'm most concerned about is Valen moving outside of fireball range whilst he's got the stone. <laughs> God, <Okay>. Valen. <laughs> so, I'm going to get on my horse and I'm going to ride. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you, you can all um, jump on your horse and you, uh, you can... Pretty, in pretty short time, because I say the trees are ignoring you now, and you find it a lot easier actually than Valen does to get out of the forest because the trees are blocking him particularly. Um, and you can, once you, once you leave the trees, you can see him in the distance uh, riding ahead of you. I'm going to stop at the riverbank. Yeah, there's, there's a, there's oh, a okay, there's right, 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 right. plain between Oh, I you. get as far away as any kind of trees or anything, not as possible really, but I'll I mean, There's the old tree around, but. Uh, yeah, you assume you can come to like a riverbank, pretty much where you um you, you found your burnt barge last time, and indeed there are still some blackened pieces of wood sticking up in the mud. Just just one thing: once we're all out of this wood, I this is a completely irrational thing that I'm about to do, because it's using up charges of a very limited item that's almost out of charges. But if there's one thing trees hate, it is lightning bolt. <laughs> and I don't like to uh, leave a warning unfulfilled. So I think it's time this forest learnt a lesson. <laughs> but I shall tell it why I'm doing this first. Now, trees, <laughs> I told you to let us go, and you didn't listen. And because of that, you have brought this on yourself. And I hoist up the staff of power with a, a roar, with the most ferocious roar that I can summon and hiss with my teeth. <laughs> and then I let the, the staff go at it and bring down a huge fifth level lightning bolt, fifth level spell lightning bolt, uh, straight down onto the, the biggest tree. Okay, the tree split open and burst into flames. Fuck you. And then I ride off. Uh, when you do that, just as you do that, there is an eerie scream that echoes around the great open space as you do that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and you ride off, and you can, you, um, yeah, you ride off yeah, after Valen. Remember, remember my face because I'm coming back. <laughs> So, Phelan, you get to the river and you're there by yourself at the this time. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to do? Are you well, just going to wait? Or... I'm just going to wait, yeah. Okay. Uh, you just see a barge nudging around, coming coming north, coming away from, from Huff, um, Radcliffe up towards Huff. You can see a barge just, just coming around the, uh, the a reed bed that's quite, quite nearby. Okay. Uh, and you can see back where you came, uh, this huge lightning bolt strike and some smoke and flames come up and the three of your three your, your three companions riding towards you. Am I aware if you're going to be crossing the river again? Uh, you don't know if you're crossing the river or not yet, do you? You have not made plans. No, what I'm saying is if I, did, if I was aware of that, I'd, I'd call the uh, bar driver and see if we can acquire his services. Right, it's not going to happen very often. <laughs> But 
there is there is quite regular bars. Is there, I'm, 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 I'm at a regular bar stop, am I? I'll check the the, the, uh, the, the timings and see what's going on due for <laughs> that location. So, yeah. I mean, the hour. Are you waiting on the hour? Are you getting off your horse? Or? No, I'm saying I'm yours. Okay, so after a short time, the rest of them catch you up. Yeah. And, uh, and they, yeah, yeah, so by that time, the, the barge is in full view on the river. Well, we can call it if you need to. It looks, it looks this barge looks in really good condition. The sails look new. Uh, the people on board, it, it looks like a working barge, but the people on board look quite well dressed. Not like the other barge people were sort of wearing <laughs> rags and stuff. It's suspicious. It, it's different to the other barge, bargemen you've seen. This one, this ship looks, this barge looks well clean. I say new sails. Well, it's, you know, that, paint. It's, like it's, it's like it's a new barge. I test my section on it, see if I notice anything odd. You can if you want. Oh, 17, uh, 23. Okay, yeah. You just think it, it, it does look odd compared to other barges you've seen. Uh, it's obviously a working barge, but this one looks brand new. Like I say, it's fresh paint. A lot of barges start as brand new, didn't they? They do. They all start as brand new. You can see many brand new ones, but uh, it's it's also the crew that are quite, quite, they're in new clothes. They're not in like old working clothes. They are new clothes. Yeah. Um, but the barge is, is a working barge. You can see that the deck is, is stacked with stuff. Um, so we are so we hail. Depends what you're going to do. I think we ought to be on the other side of the, um, the river. So yeah. I. So I'm going to build a bridge on this river. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to commission one, actually, if we get enough money. Well, look, some of us have got estates. I'm sure we can arrange a bridge to be built. Yeah. I've got a lot of money into my estate already, I think. I don't know much are you going to hail him? Are you going to stop him or what? C call me paranoid, but if I had hair on the back of my neck, I, I think it would be sticking out right now. Hmm. There's not any magic on that boat, is there, Cat? I could find out. <coughs> they must um, swab their poop deck three times a day. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I can find out. Um, it's just a. Uh, I've never much liked casting this spell as an actual spell. Uh, okay, I'll do it. Uh, I do the old twitch of the nose like I'm bewitched. Bloody hate that. The whiskers go <laughs> bouncing all around the place. So then I utter a few arcane words and uh, I cast Detect Magic. Okay. Uh, nothing shows up. Well, I don't think it's illusionary, if that's uh, your concern. There's no magic that I can see. So um, maybe it is just a brand new barge, or indeed, probably, given the people on it look a bit smart some kind of royal barge there's no i mean you've been on like a royal barge on, on the original trip up the river um yes there's no um symbols or emblems on the boat that you can see that would be on a royal barge so if see some kind of uh, person who's it, it's owned by somebody <laughs> who's a lord or or well to do and therefore connected with the emperor the last thing we would want is to be recognised by someone close to the Emperor. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it sounds logic. At this, this point, the, the guy on the, uh, the guy at the, 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 the steam, steam the boat sort of notices, notices you standing on, on the bank. Um, he walks over to the handrail on your side of the, your side of the barge. He says, hey, hey, it's you lot, isn't it? Hey, hello, hello! And he starts waving at you, and you recognise him as the guy that originally took you across the river. That. that um, <laughs> <laughs> so the money was spent well, I see. 
and a right, and it's tries to cost a fortune to get you across the river. He goes, oh, 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 it's you, in it? All right, do you want to get across the river again? <laughs> and hold up a single gold coin. <laughs> He sort of like he sort of like steer over there, over there. So you know, Boris sort of comes over to your side, and uh, he he jumps down onto the bank. And he says, "I I didn't think I'll see you lot again." He said, "That was a bloody good trip you made. I made some money out of you lot." He said, "I bought, yeah. three, I bought three barges." Three. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure our bar would be very pleased with that. I'm making a fortune, he said. Where did you make the all the cash? Uh, he is not with us, but we will give you gold to cross the river, just the one. Oh, that's that's that, that's fair enough. I've, 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 I don't need to charge you that much anymore, he says, because I'm, I'm making a mint now. It was the making of me that was that trip. <laughs> I still... I, I, I'll, I'll take you over for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so you do the first trip in the same manner. Uh, it get, gets across, and you can you can dismantle the second bank. You go, sure, I can take you all the way to halfway if you want. Wouldn't be a bad idea, you know, would it, guys? We do need to get there. Yeah, let's do it. Bro, um... as long as you can guarantee us safety. Well, not to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, you're, consider your friends now, he said. You've done you, done you great service, he said. It's, 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 it's been a, it's, the whole business has turned around. We are, how would, how would the bar put it? We are anonymous investors. <laughs> so, anonymous investors, I like that, I like that. So don't talk about us. No, no, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. You can talk about the bar all you like. <laughs> what was his name? Hadarai, yeah. Hadarai, yeah, yeah. We, we, we took him for a bit of a ride, he said, but, you know, it, it's really paid off for us. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, you mean can... to do that pun? <laughs> We, we we could afford when we when we went right back to um, Radcliffe. We could afford better stock to bring up to halfway. We made money on it. We made and it just sort of like it just snowballed. It's the best thing ever happened to us. Meeting you lot. Mm. All right, halfway it is. Would it be presumptuous to suggest that this would be a good chance for a cigarette? You can do. I light up my pipe. <laughs> Settle back on the deck. <laughs> okay. I Go on, have deck. your real life right. smoke. <laughs> BRB. I'm going to get coffee. Or I could just push the wrong button.
How's it all shaping up for the Con Plus then? Yeah, I mean, uh, we need some more games listed. So, uh, incidentally, I assume you're running one. <laughs> I haven't actually thought about it, but I will. Please get one up there soon. Because <laughs> we're leaving games in. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I mean, the telethon is going to be amazing. That Anyone who watches that is going to win so much stuff. Um, it's it's unbelievable amounts, but the, uh, the the game submissions just opened, so we need to get some in there. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. I'll have to think of something uh, to do. I did a few last time. I don't know if we do that again or something different this time. Do both. It's three days. <laughs> Could do that. It's true. If do you play a game on Friday night? No. Well, there you go. There's your opportunity to start. <laughs> you might get a new group. Friday nights, yeah. I think I'll get killed. <laughs> just run from under there. I don't know. Just looking at Jay's bookcase behind him, see what he's got there. My bookcase. I get easy for if you like. What is my CD? I think that shelf's that's all mainly Simbrum, Coriolis, Bitmini, Azir, and Conan. And then there's the <coughs> lower shelf. I get them very again. Have you looked through the uh, John Corey yet? Uh, I have looked through it, obviously, yeah. Um, I want to run it one time, but I'm waiting for them to get a character sheet up on Roll20. And then I've got. That's. Uh... A few. A few RPG. Um, yeah, I'm just waiting for we get a character sheet with Roll20, and I'll probably run a game. I quite like this, maybe up the old system and stuff, it's nice. So it's other one. Have you ever seen this on a D6? I think this is funny. I think it's always hilarious. I don't know if you can see it properly there. Oh, yeah. You see something odd about it? Uh, oh, yeah, it's got a line underneath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's normally used on things like D10s and stuff, or D12s mm. or D12s. Yeah. D12s indicate a 6 rather than a 9. Oh, look, I rolled a nine. It's just D6. I rolled a nine on a D6. Woohoo! Yeah. Uh, that's quite fun. That's quite good, actually. I like that. Yeah, the other, the other put a line on it or, or a dot next to it, don't they? Yeah. Um, <clears> they used to have a D10, didn't they? It would indicate it were D20s that used to have 10 or 1, 10, 10, rather than 20. You know what I mean? Yes. <coughs> so, what do you think you're all going to do? Are you going to cross the river or are you going up the river on the barge? I think we're going to go up the river on a barge. The question is, how do we. We need to make a plan to steal this stone from the Emperor, the most heavily guarded place in the world. Now, I can still contact Lady Cassiter. Cressida. Cressida. Get as bad as me. <laughs> Renaming her. Um, so we could try to use her because as far as she knows, we're trying to rescue the stone. What if we tell her 
that the only way to recover this stone is with the power of the first stone, and we get her to arrange a completely different group of brigands to hand it over to us. Is she going to trust us enough to allow these group of brigands to hand the stone over? It depends if if uh, her mother is in conversation with her. <laughs> well, her mother does attempt to attack us, didn't she? Well, mm. I, 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 I have the feeling that's some kind of spirit, that mother. She isn't... <clears throat> She's talking about decay of the earth and stuff like that. She's some kind of druidic spirit. Yeah, but what it shows me, in my mind, it seems like she attacks us, which obviously goes to show that there is definitely a ulterior motive to getting these. Mm. If they're willing to attack for it, if she's friends with Cressida, then obviously they're going to be on pretty much the same level, I reckon. So. Yes, they, they are in league. However, when Lady Cressida spoke to her the first time, I remember the mother saying that she hadn't spoken to her in so long, or that Lady Lady Cressida hadn't been there in so long. Right. Do you Something think, along those lines. Do you think she must look for somebody else? I don't think they're in communication, is my point. Certainly in league, but I don't think they communicate with each other. Well, there's one thing we haven't considered. What if we actually let the mother acquire the stone we've got? And leverage that how? Well, we... We get ourselves into a situation where she comes at us with a load of trees or however she wants to do it. And we let her catch the stone. She then has it to herself, which means we don't need to look after it. We can then find the other stone. Obviously, we wouldn't allow her to capture this stone until we knew where the other one was. We head back over to where she is, grab the other stone from her. I think there seems to be this, this over... I want to understand this. There seems to be this overriding desire for us not to be in possession of this stone, yet I feel it's just the safest place for it. Yeah, I do. I agree. I think giving it over to her just to then have to go for another one, then you get it back again. That seems like we're going back. Well, I'm, I'm worried about the amount of power that both will have in, you know, a close space. Yeah, but by giving it to her, aren't we doing that anyway? Because if she never the first one is, and we give her this one, then she has all the power. We don't worse, know that. Uh, worse yet is the mother, I'm sure, much like Lady Cressida, would be one of these people that could utilise just the magic in this stone to some effect. And Well, we already know that she's set against us. Lady Cressida could use the other stone to some degree, even without having both. <coughs> Yeah, I'd be reluctant to... Uh... There is good news, though. This book I've been reading does say that there is a link between the world of the dead and the world of the living, so if this kills us, there's a chance we can come back. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic news. Given <laughs> we're running out of options very quickly. Oh, no, I'll be tempted to hide this thing somewhere and we know where it is. So that we haven't got it on us, because the last thing you want is these people to grab it. And I think by having it on us, it, it becomes vulnerable. I, I think hidden, it would just be stolen. I, I would rather it was with us. Only if we, only if we hid it, where we, nobody else would find it. If we hid it somewhere, nobody else would find it, then it can't be stolen. And it's not like we're being followed. I mean, we're being followed, but not that closely. Let's work out what our plan would be to get the other stone first before we decide what to do with this one. Yeah, well, we know we have a stone in the Emperor's place, don't we, in the palace, somewhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we need to see it, don't we? But we first what, need to find out where it is. What if we utilise 
the Emperor's desire to own both stones by actually retrieving it for the Emperor. And when the Emperor gets both stones together, that's when we pounce. If we were to deliver the stone to the Emperor, we would be heroes and knights and very high up, possibly even appointed to his personal guard. Yeah, but we're relying upon that happening because, I mean, just because we give it to him doesn't mean we're going to be anywhere near him when he puts them both together. No. We need to find out when that's going to happen, where that's going to happen, and how it's going to happen. And that's well, a fact, isn't it? There are two um, things to say to that. First is he's going to do it very quickly. I mean, that much is certain. His greed will get the better of him. We know that. And secondly, is uh, there's at least two of us that can position ourselves such that even if even if we don't get positions of high station, we'll be there. But if we were to give it back to him and ask to be his honor guard, to continue to protect the stone, he'd have no reason to doubt us because we've just recovered the stone for him. Who better to trust? from his perspective. Or, the other thing we could do, we could actually say to him that we'd never retrieve a stone, somebody else got it first, sent by somebody else. If he sent, if he sent somebody, then maybe we could say that Chris has sent someone as well, and they got the stone before we did. And then also tell them that they have <laughs> other stones as well. They have both stones, which may make him go to the place where he hid the stone, to check to see if it's still there, if we could find out that way. Your line of thinking might work. The exact details would need some alteration, I fear, as remember he did send, he did not send us, and he likely knows Cressida, we were sent yeah, yeah, yeah. for Cressida. But the line of thinking isn't necessarily bad to, to encourage him to check on the stone himself. <gasps> Didn't Hadarai? Have fakes made? No, I think he was planning on having fakes made. I think he had a bit of him doing it. Mm. And the fact is, the fakes wouldn't act the same, would they? Which is the problem. Like, no, but if we turned up with lots of fakes, we could say... See, what we could have done, if we still had your map, <coughs> well, we, we could have gone to the Emperor and said they had the other stone. And then he goes looking for it. We send a mouse to follow the Emperor, and then he tells us where he went. We can do that still. Can we? Because that the mouse can come back and tell us, and we can steal it. You must understand, mouse is a celestial being. He isn't dead. He's just back in heaven. Oh, okay. I can wrench him back out. <laughs> well, that may be a good plan of doing it then, because he'll be followed by the mouse. He wouldn't expect that. We'll say we have reason to believe they've got the other stone. They've stolen it from you. And then leave Mouse around and wait until he goes. Then Mouse will come back, tell us where he went, and then obviously we'll have to find a thief or something from somewhere who can what? break it and um, steal it. Are you not good enough, Phelan? I'm not a thief, I'm an adventurer and archer, I told you that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why would I say I'm a thief? I'll just say you're a thief. Oh, in that case, I'm going to keep all my belongings in my phone. I mean, I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> I mean, I have to be a bit stupid, wouldn't I? I'm saying, no, I'm a venture and an archer. <laughs> Nonetheless, the two of us have abilities to move unseen that others don't. I, 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 when it comes yeah. to sneaking around, I'd rather we did it ourselves than hired it out to a mercenary. Well, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously, we could probably do it ourselves. I'd imagine that I, you know, I could probably drop <laughs> certain skills that... I, I may have acquired over time as my venturing and archery, and archery has taught me and stuff. So you're heading up, you're heading up river now. So we have two choices. Yeah. We either hand the emperor the stone, use the positions of power that would give us to be close to the emperor, ask to be his honor guard. Yeah. That is what we want. Yeah. Um, I don't like the idea at all. We could even say that we we could even point out the obvious that who else can you trust near the stones but those who would give you one freely. Yeah. He went there so well, I've got me on the car. I've had them for years and I've always trusted them, so I don't need any new ones, folks. But here's all the money, go away. Mm. 
And if they don't go well, I'll smite you because I've got the power of a god. If we can put some distrust into his honor guard, because he sent his honor guard down to capture the other stone, right? So if we can put some distrust into their performance, or as if there is a traitor in their midst, what we need is one of those guards as a turncoat that is willing to say they captured the stone, but I mean, there was a traitor. Or even get something from an honor guard that only an honor guard would know. So, like, do the classic heist thing where you kind of get a member of the security forces, right? Get him, find out where his nearest bar is, find out what his weakness is, be it alcohol, women, or whatever, right? Blackmail him to tell us something that only he would know about the Emperor, and then approach the Emperor and say, oh, I think they found the stone. Somebody told us that. Uh, and he'll say, oh, I don't believe that. But he also told us that this. And you'll think, oh, shit, how do they know that? So it must be true. <laughs> or do something like that because there's always that whole, that whole thing where they, they get a, one of the security guards drunk or in compromising position or stuff like that. Really. We've got options. Mm. Lord Commander Sabea, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. Or is he still AFK? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Run off. Oh, no, he's back again. See you. Oh, you baby. It's R2-D0. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, could you repeat that, please, Ian? Yeah, I might speak. Oh, bugger. We can't hear you. Do you, do you want to try the quick disconnect and reconnect? Because at least after a reconnection, it does seem more solid. Okay, oh, man. You can only have four of us saying clear at the same time. Apparently. Or three of us. In bad, man, isn't it? Something, really. Whoa. That's better. Yay. So, what are your thoughts, Lord Commander Surveil? These, all of your plans seem too um, complex, complicated. Uh, I, I figure the best thing would be a simple approach. Um, some of us stay and protect the eye, and others enter the royal palace and capture the other one. So split the group up, are you saying? Mm -hmm. Are you suggesting we split the group up? Yes, perhaps even part of the audience with the Emperor may work. However, we would have to secure the gem somewhere. And I, I am reluctant to release it from one of us. Um, how about your squire? He's in Boston. He is, yeah, he's, he's acting commander, isn't he? However, there is the other knight whom you talked to. Uh, True, but I don't know if he would be reliable with this stone. He was bad enough when I met him before. God knows he could be down the the path even more now. Yeah, there's a lot of temptation there, isn't there? You think how much he could sell that to the Emperor? <laughs> or anybody could sell it to the Emperor. I mean, that's temptation. No, I, I doubt he would sell it. I doubt it would consume him. I don't know. Vaylin, could you pass me the stone back again for the moment, please? Yeah. I'll have to try something. <clears throat> so, uh, okay. What it says, you're having this discussion on a couple of days. It takes you to travel down the river. So. Okay. When we're close to um, name of the place I've forgotten. Hathway. Hathway. That means the two stones are fairly close together. Does the stone look any different? 
Uh, the stone started off like a red colour, but it's been getting proceedingly dark, similar to the other one that started green and was getting darker and darker and darker. Um, and you start to see all the sea like speckled, almost like um, a starscape inside. Okay. I want to, I'm just going to try casting a spell, um, but whilst holding the stone, and I'm going to try and, if I can in some way, I want to try and channel the stone. Um, okay. Uh, just just to see if it enhances magical power at all. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll cast, I'll cast a fireball, but as a normal spell. Okay. And I just want to see the effect of it. I cast it at the river behind us on an empty stretch when there's no one around. Or directly behind the boat where you want. Yeah. Okay. At maximum range, 150 <laughs> feet, just in case. <laughs> okay, yeah. There's, there's a huge whoosh. Um, and a fireball leaves your hand, or uh, normally, but immediately expands. It scorches the back rail of the boat and the back, back uh, the stern of the boat as it leaves. You can see the water boiling off as it thunders off down the river, um, and you, the boat even sort of tips downwards as the water is disappearing from behind the boat in the river. And it explodes, it disappears off as there's an explosion, a huge blinding flash. Might have to hang on to this. <laughs> <laughs> Until we catch the other one, that could come in handy. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um. You reckon that was that was nine times more powerful than normal? It is indeed a powerful thing. Right. Bear in mind that was your first attempt at it as well. And we're going to get closer. I think I have a solution. To <laughs> and I think it involves lots of fireballs. Also... Uh, haste, oddly enough. <laughs> to declare war on the Emperor. No, think about it. If we were to put... If, or if I was to cast haste whilst channeling this stone, the amount of boost to one's speed could be phenomenal. It could allow us to get in and out before they could even react. I think it's worth. We're going to rest up for it, uh, presumably, before we go in anyway. Yeah, well, you yeah, yeah. yeah. still on the boat. It's a very leisurely, leisurely cruise. I could try casting the haste spell whilst in Hathwaite and see what impact yeah. that has. Because, it's like the. The amount that somebody could achieve whilst hasted with that much effect, they, 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 they could be in and out before anyone could blink. I, I think this combined with the plan of, that uh, Lord Commander Sabeo came up with could work. Mm -hmm. But we still need to know the location. So the the mouse idea of um, Valens was a good one too. Well, I could have the mouse over the palace, but it would take a long time. We'd have to lay very low in the meantime. I mean, it could take days or weeks for a mouse to find it. But if if the emperor is, is, is as egotistical as we think he is, maybe he visits the uh, the other the other uh, stone quite often. Maybe looks at it. You know that's sort of keeps an eye on it, make sure it's still there, and you know that kind of sort of uh, concern that it gets at any moment. Quite a powerful drug we look at all the time, I reckon. That's why people can get close. 
What? Well, how about that? Your know, detect magic spell. Would that does that give you an, an indication of the strength of the yeah, items? Yeah, I think I actually sort of like. D detect magic has a very limited range, um, and ju just just Wait, just to be clear, use this. Nine times. Well, if I could walk around the Imperial com compound unhindered, then maybe that might work by channeling the stone into detect magic. Could you place? This is a bit of a lot, really. I don't know how it works, but if you had detect magic active, you walk around. Would it? Would you have to keep casting it, or would it just keep on working as long as? It's active? It, it lasts about 10 minutes, so but the, the problem is the compound is the size of the city. It, no, it is the size of the city, I mean, it's... If there's some way of touching a detect magic spell to a mouse and sending it off. Uh, alas, I, I'm afraid that is beyond my, my abilities. I, I don't think I'm as good as you think I am. <laughs> That'd be quite a cool thing we have to do, would Turns into a mouse and send off, so he just keeps standing over like a little GPS device. Oh, there are there are spells where that's possible. I don't have them. Oh, um, uh, I mean, we could try sending Matt into the compound for a few days, see if it has any luck. Failing that, we may have to go in, but. I don't know what kind of reception we would get in there. I think maybe one of us can see the Emperor and then let him out to go off and throw him and instructing him to follow, it to follow the Emperor around. We'll be better to see into the complex. Well, get, getting the mouse into the complex isn't a problem. The mouse finding it could be. If the mouse is instructed to follow the Emperor... When you left halfway, the did sort of like... Um, you, you you were awarded by the emperor, and you were asked to go in to pick up your estate. But you, you went off on a separate mission, didn't you? Mm. <clears throat> so you don't know how you feel, how he received you at the moment. Well, let's send Mouse in first, and after a few days, maybe something might come of it. Um, okay. I want to do where uh, I find out any uh, crime families in the city actually ever done a detailed plan of the uh, palace. What is an architect plans of it, or anything, old plans? Are you breaking up badly there, uh, Jay? Do any old plans of the palace? Like yeah. We know a rough layout, but I, d I don't think blueprints would be available now. They'd be in the archive, if there are anyone. Yeah, that's mm. what I thought. Like the old, old plans of the castle, of the actual things, so they would indicate where certain rooms were more secure or had thicker walls or like secret rooms, maybe that were built. Oh, you know where the things are. You know where the the main palace is. Um, you yeah. know where the um, treasury is, and you know where the archive is, and the administration buildings. <clears throat> so I doubt he'd keep it in the treasury. He'd keep it somewhere that only he can go and get it. I reckon. So, uh, you're on the boat, you're on the boat, you're traveling up the, uh, up the river. Um, you're taking a few days to do this and you're, it's quite a relaxing time. And you're having these discussions as you're traveling. Um, mm. So obviously the t next time it's, it's taken, then this is actually, um, you've actually got back your, uh, your any, any sort of spells or powers or hit points you want to get back. Okay. Um... So when we arrive in Huffweight, uh, 
I mean, I'll, on the route, I'll summon another familiar. Bring Mouse back into existence. Uh, there is there is a moment where I have to apologise. <laughs> um, and uh, but when we get into Hathway, uh, I'll go up to the walls of the castle somewhere and uh, send Mouse in on its mission to try and find the stone. The suggestions to check uh, the Emperor's bedroom and chambers, rather, um, and the treasury and explain where I believe those are based on our knowledge of the palace. What sort of powers is it that uh, Mouse has? Any or not? Uh, it's physically a mouse. It's mentally a celestial creature that I can communicate with. Okay, so it's got intelligence, but it's got no, no powers of its own as such? No, it's a mouse. Okay. In, it, it is a celestial creature, so uh, but it is trapped. I've seized it from, I've ripped it out of heaven and I've put it into the body of a mouse and made it subservient to me. That's brutal. That is, isn't it? That's pretty rough. And you keep killing it. <laughs> Sometimes I eat it for breakfast. <laughs> okay. So, um, when you get to Hathway, the, the barge owner lands um, or docks next to a, a, uh, one of the docks on the on the southern side, next to the main city. Um, <clears throat> across the river, you can see uh, the, 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 the left-hand corner of the actual <clears throat> palace of the of the, uh, the, the, the grounds, um, and you notice that. It looks different. It looks subtly different to um, to the last time you saw it. It looks almost um, I don't know, like newer. It looks the the, the, the stones look squarer. Um, the pointing looks more accurate. The whole, He's using the stone almost not glows, but. It's like, almost like an unreal sort of visual quality about it. Like it's really crisp and clear. Okay, so he's definitely using the stone. So if we can get Mouse to follow the Emperor and observe where he keeps the stone. And I'll send him off over the wall. Okay, so yeah. I'll give him the choice of climbing the wall or being catapulted in. <laughs> Mouse climbs. Yeah, you can climb the wall. Um, what are you doing in the meantime? Are you going to see Caressa or are you just taking up uh, lodging somewhere in the city? So who's doing what? First thing I want to do is, whilst I'm nice and close to the other stone, is I'm going to try haste and see how fast I can move. Oh, goody. <laughs> okay, haste. How does haste actually work? Let me see. A bright streak flashes from your pointing finger to a point you choose within range, and then... Oh, no, that's fireball. <laughs> <coughs> choose a willing creature that you can see within range. Until the spell ends, the target's speed is doubled. It gains a plus two bonus to AC, it has advantage on dexterity saving throws, and it gains an, adi an additional action on each of its turns. Oh. That action can be used to take the attack with one weapon attack only, dash, disengage, hide, or use an object action. When the spell ends, the target can't move or take actions until after its next turns as a wave of lethargy sweeps over it. Um, its duration is one minute. It is a concentration spell. Okay. So, so I want to see just how many actions are done essentially. I, I, so I, I get. There's, there's nothing there that you can actually. There's nothing there that you can not be able to turn corners or, or turn corners in a more difficult way because no, no. of your velocity. Okay. You cast haste, and uh, well, you can shoot shoot up the street or. I'm going to run to the other side of the city. Okay. You run to the other side of the city in like almost like a blink of an eye. Okay, that works. Uh, okay, how long is that? So, a blink of an eye. Okay, I run back. 
getting you there and they, they hardly notice you're gone. There's just a, a gust of wind as you left. And okay, I'm going to pop into the compound. And you're facing the wrong direction. Moonwalking. Uh, I'm going to pop into the compound. I'm going to find the Emperor. Okay, that will involve opening and closing doors and such like. Uh, that's true. Yeah, that... that... Uh, just throw yourself through the doors, it's fine. <laughs> oh, but hang on, these, these are actions I take. So, I use an object action is an action I can take. Okay. So, is it a problem for me to open and close doors? I mean, if they're locked, surely, but yeah. Okay, no, that's fine. Um... You can so you go up the riverbank, across the bridge, in through the first gate, and you basically retrace the steps you did when you went went to there. Uh, you find the emperor um, in the throne room at this time of day. Okay. With the courtiers, uh, with the courtiers around him. Okay, and then I immediately run back out. Oh, okay. I think we could do something while you're there, Tom. Um. Actually, yeah, I mean, how much longer have I got? <laughs> uh, so, okay, let's go to his bedroom. Uh, his chambers. You wouldn't necessarily know where those are, though. Yeah, but they'll be upstairs, right? I'll try lots of doors. I'll, I'll try the one that's got the most flunkies changing bed sheets and shit. Okay. <laughs> so you can see there's um, there is a room indeed upstairs uh, with a guard on either side of the door. Yeah, straight through. <clears throat> it's uh, it's a large room. Um, it has uh, like, a, like a, a seating area with a large fire. There's a couple of suits of armor placed around, and uh, uh, quite a large bed. Turn the place over. Um, to... <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the door opens, uh, and a guard sticks his head in after hearing the noise. And sees the stuff flying around. Yeah, it's, it's just a stray bit of magic. It's fine. <laughs> Do I find this bloody stone? Uh, no, you don't. Okay. Uh, secret passages, secret doors. Uh, no. 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 Okay. Uh, dart out the room. Have I got long left? Not long. Okay. I will head out of the compound. Okay. Basically, what you've done now is you've got into the compound, you've located the, the emperor in the throne room, and you've basically searched the upper, like, two or three stories of the palace. So there's several rooms you've looked in. Okay. Okay. Hi, <sighs> right, guys. <laughs> that was you doing your spell, right? What, what was me? <laughs> You've, you've used it. Cat's going to sleep now. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I actually sit down, I'm exhausted. Uh, sorry, I, 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 I don't know what you mean. I, I'm feeling kind of lethargic, actually. I think I might just take a little nap. All right, yep. I'll, I thought we'd um, there, in the street. <laughs> I'll see if they've got any fish for you. <laughs> so what's everyone doing? Are you... Are you getting a, a room in an inn or are you going back to caress in this place i think we should lie low yeah i'm anybody to know where I am. well i'm um i've got a bit of a knack for being friendly with locals so i could fairly easily get as a, a low profile type place to stay but hospitable yeah, there's plenty of inns around, especially along the waterfront where all the, the, the bargemen people stay and travellers. So there's plenty of inns around to pick. Well, basically anywhere that wouldn't draw attention, so not really a tourist pub, if you will. Okay, so you can ask the barman, uh, the, the barman bargemen to, uh, to put a, a place where they would stay. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it, it, it's a street back from the main main drag, so it's it's off the beaten track a little bit. Um, it's not not exactly run down, but it's obviously uh, not a top class establishment. But the uh, the place is, is is clean, it's dry, and uh, there's a nice smell of food coming out of it. Fresh bread, bread, bread and stuff. It should be all right here. 
So you can get real rooms there quite quite happily. <coughs> and uh, the barman will say, yeah, so like, oh, we we're, we're, we usually stay here. He says, yeah, we we can we can afford better now, but <coughs> we we like to uh, like to keep to the places that, that we know. He says. Um, so they're, they're they're very reliable. It's uh, you don't get no trouble here. <coughs> I'm going to go and um, talk to some of the people who I made acquaintances with last time I was here. Okay. Find out what they can tell me um, from living in the city for years. <clears throat> okay, Koki. Well, I suppose I better get us some place, uh, some rooms, and some food. Yeah, they can, they can supply rooms. They've got, uh, they can have a room each or uh, a room between two. It's up to you entirely. How much are you charging per room? Um, they said they'll, they'll, they'll charge. It's, um, it's a silver piece uh, a week that includes food. Uh, I turn to Sabay out. How long do you think we'll need here? Let's start with a week. True. Yeah, so we could always we could always top it up later if we need to. Um, in that case, yeah, I, I put down a silver piece. Uh, well, actually, no, I make it two silver pieces. Okay. They say, yeah, that's, that'll be very nice. Thank you. He says, uh, we'll give you some rooms overlooking the street. Well, uh, it doesn't matter which way they look as long as they won't draw attention. He tells you which um, uh, times the uh, the times the uh, the doors locked at night and uh, when the food's available. And he says uh, you're quite welcome. He says uh, take your take your stuff up now, or if you want to just stand here and have something to eat, we can uh, we'll take get taken up for you. Ah, uh, well, yeah, some food would be good. Um, do you have meat? He says, uh, yeah, we've got. Stu uh, there's, there's, there's a leg of lamb, or there's some, some chicken, or stew. Oh, lamb would be good. Uh, have you got anything, um, we have a, we have a cat. Do you have anything that she could have? Well, there's always fish. Fish from the river. Fresh okay. Water. A fish would be good too. We can get a, we'll, we'll get a, a trout cooked. Oh, she'll like that. And uh, obviously a round of drinks, please. Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, ales, wine, spirits, anything you want. You've got it all. I'm happy with an ale. I think, Sabay, yeah, I probably drink the wines, do. right? We'll stay with ale while we're here. This, this time of day is quite quiet in the bar. Everyone's been working. So you've pretty much got the place to yourself. There might be a few others in here, but you've got the bar to yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah well, I also I also point to the barge bargeman and say and whatever he wants as well oh thank you very much very kind of you he said uh, are you here on business or visiting family a uh, bit of both really oh interesting he says uh, uh, what, what, who's your family says where do they live Oh well, um, one of our party, the elf. You might have seen him. He's already, he's already gone to see if uh, if see if they're in town. Oh, okay, that's all right. Then he'll be back in a minute. He says, uh, we'll, "We'll make sure there's some food left for him." Brilliant. He doesn't eat much. Uh, if you uh, if there's anything you need, he says, "Ask or do the best we can." Great, thank you. Okay. So, is there anything else you want? Charles, the bells come down. Um, I listen to the reports that um, there's from my shenanigans. I can't understand it. It's funny. Uh, he's, he's after the report of my shenanigans, I think. 
Um, oh, okay. yeah. So, uh, yes, once, once I eventually recover enough, I say, well, the effect of the haste is substantial. I've already searched the main palace. I splurt my drink out for the umpteenth time. <laughs> it's that good. It's very powerful, but... I'm loath to do it twice a day, and I couldn't do it more. I mean, I, I ran from one side of the city to the other, and I've searched a couple of floors of the main palace. I also checked out the throne room. The emperor was in there. I'd like to do it at different times of day. The emperor's very yeah. easy to find because his his like to be flunk is either on hand or waiting outside. So he's not a hard person to find, but at that time of day he was in the throne room. Are you able to talk to your mouse friend while separate? Um no, no, I'll have the rendezvous with Mousy tomorrow and the day after and the day after and the day after and so on. Okay. <laughs> Everyone else froze for me there, right? I... It is. Everyone else is frozen from you. Oh, no, you're uh, breaking up, Phil. Yeah, everyone was frozen for me during the entire time I was talking, and. Yeah. Okay, they heard, yeah. I heard us, so. They're kind of breaky up here now. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, you're back. You sound fine to me. Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, you, you seem okay now, but yes, Hangouts is definitely on another wobble. It's dying a death. Mm. Okay. So yes, I, I'll check in with Mousy tomorrow, and then perhaps I can try another search of myself tomorrow, and we, we can do that each day until eventually we hopefully find it. Okay. The problem, I fear, will be us being found first. I'm a uniquely recognisable character, but at least last time I was here, I was wrapped up. <sighs> Could you not wrap yourself up again? Well, I, I wouldn't want to look the same, but maybe I should try some of your clothes. Uh, if they fit, which no. I don't think they will. Perhaps from the market or somewhere, but perhaps somebody could buy me a rope. And I'll, I'll stay here, at least just so I blend in more. Yeah, mm. to more, more this sort of style clothing. Because at the moment I stand out so much. I mean, I'm a, a mostly naked cat with some travelling accoutrements and a backpack. But if if I at least look normal, normally attired, I would only stand out for my race. All right. I suppose a robot for me. Keep a ladder or a lasso we can send to the mine. So none of those have to go out. Sorry, what was that? The innkeeper. We have a ladder or a lasso we can send to the market, so none of us have to leave. I didn't really get that again. He, he's, 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 he's asking if the innkeeper's got a young person to send to the market instead of one of us. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. The, 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 the big stable boy or the, the, the chambermaid, up to you. Uh, if you could send the chambermaid and just ask her to pick up a selection of fashionable clothes with these five gold pieces, please, uh, of my size, and buy something for herself. Well, that's very generous of you, he says. That, uh, that's, uh, that's very good. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sure she'll find something that will suit you. I just feel that my attire is more suited to a different culture right now. And I should do my bit to blend in. Understandable, understandable. And uh, he'll give her a shout and he'll arrange for her to uh, to go off. Um, anything she should avoid, he says. Any particular colours you don't like? Fur. No fur. Uh, 
I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but my species doesn't see the same colors as you, so I've never been really a color person. Yeah, okay. Knock yourself out. <laughs> Does she look really confused at that statement? Hmm. Okay, yeah, so she can go off and she'll gather um, the clothes for you. My eyes, however, are highly tuned to seeing movement. <laughs> and she will um, she will come back with something quite quite simple for you. So you can describe it way you want. Um, and she's bought herself a, a, a new dress. Um, meanwhile, um, is, is Valen still out about in town? It appears to be muted. And possibly frozen. Oh, yes, yes I am. I am slightly up and about. Didn't realise I'm muted. Yeah. I'm ignoring you. <laughs> no, I am still uh yeah, I'm still out there. Can and stuff. Okay. Finding out what I can. What do you want to do next? Do you, to, you uh, stay in there? Are you going to go and see if uh, you can catch up with check in on Cresta or just keep an eye on her? Or are you going back to um, the palace? If we go back to Cresta, won't she expect us to have the stone? And won't that be an awkward conversation? Yeah, somewhat. So probably best to stay away from her really until we know really what we're doing, I guess. Um. Okay. Um, so what do you want to do next then? What is it you're going to do? What's your next move? Going to find Roderick. So. Everybody. I still think that's a bad idea. I think we just stay put until we have some information on the location of the eye. Yeah. What's the, what's the best way for you to um, yeah how, how do you want to go about finding that out then any more than what you've done already with with cats well, mouse and... <clears throat> yeah but once a day I'll do that haste thing and I'll spend as much as I can of the minute searching the palace grounds well, buildings. Okay. Okay, I mean, there's some things, some things you can't check out because they're locked, like the mm -hmm. trip for instance. Yes, I imagine so. But I want to do it at different times of day because what I'm hoping, look, because the castle is clearly had the, some magic done on it, I'm thinking he's using the stone. So I'm going to go at different times of day so I can get down his routine. Okay. So on the second day you do it, can you can you roll with perception? Uh, Fourteen. Okay. As you are, um, what you're doing today is you, you're just gonna you're gonna check the grounds, see what buildings there are, and have um, more of a plan of, of, of attack. Which way? Which, what's the best place to search? Where to search? And in what order? So as you're rushing past the um, the palace, you get a feeling you've been watched. What, even at the state? Yes. And if you look, you can see up in a, uh, an upper window one person watching you. Okay, I'm going to head right up to them. 
Okay, you're into the palace, up the stairs, and you're going, uh, you realize you're heading towards um, the Emperor's bedroom we were um, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay, I head straight in. Who is it? Uh, the Emperor stands at the window, and as you enter the room, he, he sort of like says before he turns, he says, Ah, do you realize I could see you then? And then he turns to face you. And is he, he's basically moving at my speed? He's not moving at your speed, no. He's just okay. being his normal speed. Okay. If only I was stronger. Have you stopped in there? Yeah, I'm going to stop. Well, I'm going to stand still for a moment. It'll be a bit like the Flash when he stands still. It'll be shaking slightly. <laughs> Blinking really quickly. You can't do it. You'll destroy the world and then I zip out. <laughs> if I cut, look, if I, at least I could appear to be a mysterious omen. <laughs> so, so does he actually hear you say that? Or does he just go, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll be healing in the voice. <laughs> Yeah, so basically end talk so it's going to sound to him like somebody like a ghost talking because <laughs> i'll slow down so much okay so i mean you can carry on your investigation of the compound he won't actually uh, nothing actually stops you from looking around the compound you know what? <laughs> I no. Uh, okay. Uh. No, no. I'll tell you what. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can have a conversation with him briefly. Uh, but I've got a little bit of time. How, does he respond? Does he? What's wrong? Does he respond? Yes. What does he say? <laughs> well, what did you say to him? Oh, but right, you're going to destroy the world. You can't do it. You're going to destroy the world. That's all I say. He said, uh, he said uh, there is no intention on, of destroying the world. We will bring the gods back for the good of all. It doesn't work like that. You're going to kill us. Do you even know what I am? And that, uh, that I'll leave. <laughs> because uh, I want to give the impression that I'm some kind of vision. You know, I'm kind of there in front of him, a bit blurry, mm -hmm. um, speaking in a very warbled voice. Um, so I'm hoping that that, um, yeah. There's not a else I can do with it, so... Uh, as, you, as you leave, you see... Because um, uh, you're in the main palace building now, aren't you? Mm -hmm. As you're leaving, you can see uh, the, 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 the types of people in the palace have slightly changed a little bit. There are a lot more, um, more robed people holding staffs uh, than... than normal course here are they they're scattered around or are they they're scattered around in group, small groups okay i need to go speak to mousy um do you, do you, does this allow you to know where mousy is all the time or? uh no but uh I, i'm having a daily rendezvous with mouse so that when mouse finds the stone okay so later that when day you, when, you, when you come across Mouse this time, uh, mm. he is actually um, um, hiding in a small um, space uh, with a cat sitting outside. I hiss at the cat. <laughs> and the cat looks at you and sort of like gets up from its sitting position and wanders over and rubs against your leg. Hmm. I don't know what to do with this. And then wanders off. <laughs> Mouse, what did you find? 
Um, Mace uh, says it hasn't found the stone. Um, there seems to be um, a lot of new people in the palace. Yes. Do they all eat together at any point? Uh, they keep themselves to themselves. Uh, they may meet in small groups, but uh, not all in one go, no. They don't have a dinner time or something? They do, but a lot of these people spend awful long, awful long periods locked in their rooms or in various buildings around the uh, uh, property, um, doing doing uh, experiments and spells and things. Have they got familiars with them? Um, some have cats. She's a, for instance. Yeah, I thought that might be a problem. Ravens. All sorts of things. There's even a big spider around somewhere. Oh, nice. Uh, this is a problem. Damn. Following the Emperor. Did that turn anything up? What's his routine? Um, he uh, spent a lot of time uh, behind closed doors with various groups of these people. He's been visiting the, um, the citadel, which is like in the top most right hand corner. It's effectively a castle in its own right built into the wall of this huge palace grounds. Uh, that's the base for the Imperial Guard. Um, he spent some time there, uh, he's been to the archives, and he's been in the throne room. Okay. And, so, th and things have been changing quite a bit within the palace grounds, even more the most is bigger. Uh, flowers and fruit are getting bigger, grass is getting greener. Okay, so I think the stone's inside the citadel then. So, when I meet with you tomorrow, could you please have searched as much of the citadel as possible? Yes. Good work, Melcy. I need to go see Lord Commander Sabeo. I'll return to the uh, once I know anything I need to know, I'll return back to the to the inn room we're staying. Lord Commander Serbio. <laughs> yes. I, I think we've narrowed it down to the building, possibly, but they're beginning to put in magic people everywhere now. There, there's protections being put in place, I think. There's mages everywhere. Strike now. Sorry? We need strike now. What I think it needs is a big distraction tomorrow when I go in to draw all the mages away. Fireball. Fireball. It's your answer to everything. That will I, cause a scene. Well, I I can't fireball. Well, I suppose I could fireball then haste, but then my my thinking was that perhaps you guys could cause a scene. Hmm. Oh yes. Maybe even just shouting in dwarf will cause a scene. <coughs> There is another alternative. We could send somebody in, perhaps, uh, perhaps yourself, to recover the stone. Whilst the rest of us get a bit bang, bang, bang on the outside. Like I could be. No, I can't do much whilst I'm concentrating on your haste spell. No, you'd be vulnerable. <coughs> Thank you. 
Så det var jo bare et pakke til hjemme, eller hvad? If you want to come back to the Union, you come back to the Union. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so basically, if you're really having a meeting, um, I come in through the door and go, right, this is what I know. Um, the stone is in the Citadel, the place for the majors. Um, I can arrange to get into the grounds via the sewers, and I arrange for some of the guards to look the other way. Uh, allowing us to possibly getting into the citadel. Okay, sounds good. Um, some of my contacts have contact within the palace. Uh, there is talk of them using the stone as soon as they get it, which is why the majors are there, as I presume. If you've known about the majors already, you already know that. But we can get through into the spider sewers into the into the grounds of the citadel. Not all the guards are in in pockets but some of them are and they'll work to help us as much as possible get into where we need to get um, obviously a distraction somewhere else won't be handy uh -huh. but if some of us come through the sewers do you think several of us go in rather than doing it under extreme speed I, I must admit I think wherever this stone is I don't it? think it's going to be as simple as going in at a high speed and getting out. I think we no, do need no. a lock picking. Yeah. It's in the city, um, guarded by the Imperial Guard. Mm. If you go in at night, the guards are going to be less of them. A lot of the majors will probably be asleep. Um, as I said, some of the guards are in my pocket, so I can, they can look the other way, which will help. They may even be able to uh, get in on any, any distraction that we may have set fire to a barn or something, or, or a stables in the grounds. It's a solid plan. There is an alternative. Rather than... Um, well, I'll, I'll just come right out with it. I could cast one of those very big fireballs at the Citadel and turn it to rubble before we go in, and then we can just search the rubble at speed, rather than doing whatever traps or mechanisms are in place to stop thieves. But if the Emperor escapes, then surely he will take the stone with him? Uh, no one will be able to search that rubble faster than us, however... But we need to wait for it to turn to rubble, unless you can cast haste on the fireball. No, I can fireball and then haste, but at that point, I can't do, any, I can't do anything else that powerful again. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that if you set fire to something big like the Citadel, it will take a while to turn into rubble. Oh, I rather suspect a fireball that explosive will have a faster effect. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. For you to just that, if you do a fireball, doesn't that mean you need to have a stone on you? Or you need the power uh, of the other stone? Stone? We have a stone, and it's very close to the other stone, so its effects at the moment are massively yeah. amplified. Yeah, but isn't that taking a risk? Taking a risk because if you get captured, overwhelmed, and suddenly we've lost one. If we get captured by whom? I'm going to blow up the citadel. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's the alternative plan. I mean, we'll be we'll be, we'll be wanted uh, for life. Um. Having said that, if I've got the stone on me, I definitely won't get captured. Oh, that's good. What about the rest of us? <laughs> I have spells I can use that will definitely, with the power of that stone, will definitely help. Um, if you cast haste, you you can be passive. After after haste, I would be worn out. Yes, but if, if we go with Plan A that Baden suggested, I I uh, want to agree with the elf at this point. Yeah. But I'd rather have the stone on us when we go in, so that we can make use of it. Yeah, I agree with that as well. Yeah. Those maids will be tough. Well, the stone needs to be with either the strongest of us or the best equipped of us because that, that person may need to either fight their way out 
or get away if the rest of it gets overwhelmed or whatever. Well, perhaps, there's a shit ton of majors in there. There's going to be majors that are more powerful than you. Perhaps then I should stay close to Cat. Mm -hmm. There's no mage that, that that can compete with the power of this stone. No, but there's going to be a lot of mages there, and they've got a stone of their own. Remember. Good, we know good fireballs. <laughs> yeah, but they can do the same thing to us, can't they? I mean, that's the point, isn't it? You can only fireball so many people, and they can fireball back at us. Mm. Um, do you think you can increase your power of a stone or approximately to the second stone? I, I, I believe that channeling the stone, whilst it is in proximity to the other stone, is a huge benefit. I don't think that they know this stone is close, although they may have noticed that it has grown in power. But I don't think they realise how close it is. I don't think for one moment they believe it's in the city. I mean, I've had a conversation with the Emperor whilst holding it and he didn't Mentioned. He didn't say, give me the stone. No, he didn't. He may not. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think they're completely sure it's in the city. Um, I probably think they, they'd like hope it is. And I think if they're mages, then because of stone is in the city, you don't know if suddenly the power they're using and the things they're trying out and the testing and stuff has suddenly got better. It probably means, could indicate that the stone is closer. Is if you're feeling a physical effect, how is dozens of majors, majors, majors doing stuff kind of feel it? Do you know what I mean? It's they are channeling the stone. They haven't attuned to it yet. It took me a while to master it. Few people can. Uh, you know, it, it takes time studying with the stone. I, I think those majors are, uh, you know, still getting used to this thing. They've only just arrived. It took me... Weeks to well, do we know how long ago they did arrive? Because we've been away for a bit, haven't we? They arrived today. Is that a fact? Did they arrive today, Phil, or did they arrive earlier? I'm <laughs> <laughs> You just type it. <laughs> yeah, you've broken up really badly at the moment, Phil. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Is that worked? Yeah. Yes. The mages have been arriving for quite a while. Right. Sort of like, okay. uh, from a couple of days after you left, they've started arriving in some drabs. Okay. So, uh, so this is what I mean. They may already notice that they've suddenly increased in power. And even if they haven't, it's a risk we're, we're going to have to take that into account as they have. Yeah, I mean, it, is, it would be um, as you move around the city. Uh, it is a bit of a bit of a talk with the town that um, uh, there are a lot of mages in the city, in the in the palace now, and they are out in you know, they're buying up all sorts of ingredients from all over the place. Yeah, and as you get a stone, they're going to notice it more, aren't they? Yeah. A Faraday cage for um, magic. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, their box or something you can stick in. That's a good idea, isn't it? So they can't actually uh, feel its power. And if we need it, we can just open the box and use it. But we won't be able to recognise us getting closer. Because to them, it's kind of like this could be a beacon, couldn't it? <laughs> okay. So. 
So. So we sneak in at night through the sewers. Yeah. Yeah. Cat has the gem, the eye. Mm hmm. And we just be as careful as we can. And do we stick it in some kind of lead or something? If that stops the magic from indicating that we're there, like a little beacon? It's up to you if that's what you want to do. What, what, what's that, sorry? No. If, we stick, if, if we can get a lead box with a stone, then we can carry it in a lead box. What, the stone that we're holding? So you know the stone we're holding. Because if they recognise the power increasing, it could be a little beacon to them as we get closer and closer to the citadel. Their power increasing, increasing, increasing. Indicate the stone has been it. into the citadel several times. Right. I've been going in daily holding it. So the chances are the, the actual mages already know it here and you'll see. If they it's the same way you can. The power of the, what they will know if they're attuned to the stone. That assumes the Emperor even allows these mages to get near it at the moment. Um, they, they, they will have noticed, if they're able to cast spells channeling this stone, they will have noticed that the power has increased. Yeah. So they'll know the stone is getting close, but they they shouldn't know how. They, sh they don't know I've got it. They don't know we've got it. They don't know that we're... <clears throat> well... Okay, let's, let's work it out this way. Right? Let's say the Emperor knows that Crescent sent us to look for the stone, right? So he knows we look for the stone. He knows that you can see the scene. But two and two together kind of indicates that the chances of a return of the stone. Okay. Let's assume that he thinks we have the stone. Mm -hmm. Let's assume we go in carrying the stone in a lead box so that we can't access it and don't have access to the power of it, and we're holding it. It, does that strike you as a good plan? Because it doesn't to me. I'd suggest we use the stone. We use the advantage of it. And if, if they go running toward the stone, we know where to chase and we know who to fireball before they get there. The only thing I'm is that if we go in in stealth and we've got a stone, then that takes away our element of surprise, doesn't it? Especially if they if they recognise it and can sense it getting closer, our whole stealth thing. Ah, oh, right. Sorry, I understand the issue now. Right, the the getting closer thing is more of a geological thing. We're talking miles, I'd, like getting closer from two hundred meters to a hundred meters. I don't think that's going to make a big difference at this point. It's already as we got into the city, it got very powerful. Yeah, I realise that. That's why I'm thinking that if we take the stone with us, if we can encase it in some kind of box that that sort of, sort of blankets its power until such times as we need it. So it may be a small box as big as the stone that we can just flip open and take it out and use. But as we blanket it, if it does actually send out some kind of beacon, if you like, to these other mages, we can actually still get into the citadel under stealth and then have it there in case we do need it and when we need it, rather than them knowing we're there the only way to do that would be some kind of extra dimensional space so that the stone isn't actually there. So like a lead box wouldn't work? I doubt it. Right. You'd need to put the stone in another dimensional space so that it isn't actually there. Oh. Um, Anybody go back and hold it? <laughs> that would do it. There used to be a uh, a shop that sold magical items, but I'm afraid I cleared it out and the owners now have the estate that you have gave me. Yes, you, um, you, you, you close that door. So then maybe we should go two different ways. So that the people who are going through the sewers can still go in via stealth where somebody else goes in somewhere else. Whereas if one team fails, the other team still succeeds. Do you think the sewers are dangerous? No, I think having the, 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 the stone with this is dangerous. If I go in the sewers, I can get into the citadel. 
And if the stone's there, they can steal it. If we're all there with a stone, the chances are they're going to be knowing we're going to be what we're doing and exactly what we're going to be trying for and waiting for us to get there. Whereas if we have two teams going in, one team going through the sewers, where I can get in and steal whatever I need to steal, if I fail that, then the other team's still got the stone and they can do whatever they need to do using fireballs or whatever you want to do. I just think it gives us two opportunities rather than one. It means, well, without another route to sneak in, it means using a big spell just to get in, just to arrive at the same place. Yeah, I know, but we arrive from two different angles. I'm just thinking of the opportunity to double our chance of getting it without all dying in a massive hail of dozens of fireballs. I strongly suspect the hardest part's going to be when we get to the stone itself. Mm -hmm. What Tem we don't temptations. have... What we don't have is the tools to deal with the magic user holding one of these stones. Well, that's the other thing, then, isn't it? If we don't have, if we have two different teams, one holding one stone each, then... Oh, my gosh. Of course. Tell me, but... What we need to do is to go to a priest and buy a load of silent stones. But how long do they last? Silent stones? I've never heard of them. <laughs> well, you can cast silence on an object. So if you were to cast it onto a stone, that stone would emanate the silent spell for a period of time. And that's a good weapon to use against a uh, card. But I don't know how long it lasts. I'm not really up with priestly spells. Didn't even know <clears throat> Well, you know, I'm just thinking of weapons against casters. We're going up Potentially, your fear is what happens when we approach a caster holding the stone, one of these mages holding the stone. So we should prepare ourselves for fighting against a person that can cast powerful spells. What we need are the tools that you would use to fight against a magic user. Uh, I have some spells that might... No, not really. Uh... A smaller number of spells that might help. But if we've all got something we can use against a magic user. Huh, all I have is a four-leaf clover inside a book. Narrow to the head and all he works quite well, I find. No, it doesn't stop them speaking. <clears throat> Arrow to the face then works <laughs> well. Cut off the tongue. Mm -hmm. Got in the throat. That was sort of. I'm just trying to find a map. I'm trying to find the halfway map. I think it was on the old other computer. It was. It's way back in the chat. Yeah. Right. Now. <laughs> um. Because because that's your concern, isn't it? What do we do if there's a mage holding the stone when we arrive? No, what my, my concern is, is that we'll go in there and it's all in the hope that we get to the actual grit set that will be noticed. Our stone will emanate loads of power, which will indicate to whoever's the mages, because they're going to be probably working 24 hours on this and work out what they can and can't do with it. Right? So they're going to suddenly notice an increase in power, indicating that we're getting close. They're going to think, hold on a second, these people are getting closer. But it's obviously means they're either coming here to steal our stone or give their stone over. Now, we're also not there to give our stone over, or we'll just walk through the front door and do that. So they're going to be thinking, you know, are they going to steal our stones? So we're going to have to defend ourselves. But now we've got two stones in our proximity. This whole conversation is based on the premise that when the two stones are very close, something magic happens. And yet I've been around that castle and quite close to the citadel, and there was no increase in power. The stone didn't do anything. You've already got the power increase, you mean, haven't you? Yeah. What you're saying is that the power won't increase any further by having the second stone there. Not unless we ram them together and make them touch or something. I mean, it's it, it's an order of magnitude so powerful that the extra isn't going to be noticeable until they're rammed together and we do the thing that's meant to be done with them to bring the gods back. Mm. All right, I made up my thinking that was something. But you're not overthinking the issue of us coming up against somebody holding that stone who happens to be a powerful magic user, and we should be prepared for that. 
or a group of majors standing around the stove, <laughs> powerful <laughs> majors holding it game of Well, silence is a great way to deal with such people, but I don't have spells like that. Um, Your catapult spell, it can't rip, for example, the tongues out of their mouths, can it? No. No, can't be holding it, can they? Or... No. I mean, if the stone is in the middle of a circle, that's ideal. That I can use the catapult spell with. But if they're holding the stone, as is more likely, uh, be one person holding the stone. Now that I can't use it on. It's, it's, it doesn't work. Um. Okay, you could fireball it out of their hand and then catapult it back to you. <laughs> well, I think if a, if a mage is holding it, I'm more likely to cast something called infestation, uh, which swarms them with fleas and mites and other parasites, uh, because that is incredibly hard to cast a spell whilst you're being bitten by thousands upon thousands of fleas. Ugh, sounds That's all grim. Right. That's really mean. Okay. So wow. I'm just channeling the natural magics of a cat, right? So, what's the plan? <laughs> the, the DM. What is, is the plan? Any so, poisons, is there any poisons that can be used to actually remove the voice of someone? Like a muting poison. Yeah, because I could go in independently then basically put the poison in because the mages will be obviously eating and drinking won't they um, well maybe some... not even something as rare as that is there surely a, a potion that can cause somebody to not breathe properly or froth at the mouth yes I'm sure it will be but you've got to give it to them that's the thing you've got to make sure it is there a leper colony near here? <laughs> oh, um, no. Yes, there can be. Yeah, but the point is, this, this is, this is, you know, this is, this, they are not like a canteen or like they're not going to go to the local <laughs> McDonald's, right? They'll be drinking from the same jugs. They'll be eating from the same kitchen. So to poison jugs of wine is not too hard. Okay, there's, there's, there's more than one kitchen. Yeah, but if you look at the one for the Citadel and the one that they're mainly using, which if we have, if I, if there's guards inside who can tell us stuff, then they'll tell us what, you know, where they're mainly eating. Are they eating together? Are they all getting their food from the same kitchen? There'll be a kitchen in the main palace. Which oh, do you know the answer to this? Because Mouth told me they're eating in small groups. That's the main. Then, the majors are eating in small groups. Yes, the, the majors mm -hmm. are eating in small groups. We should have meat in small groups. Yeah, meat and eating in small groups. Yeah, but they, they um, because they're not all together at the same time, because they're doing different things, they're working on different things, they're working in different places in the palace, but all the Imperial Guard will go back to the Citadel to eat. There will be a, a kitchen for the Emperor. There will be a kitchen in like, uh, the other, in, like, the other palace. There's more than one palace in the palace grounds. Mm. Like where Cassandra's son is, yeah. um, that's called the that's called the the um, Palace of the Regents. Okay, but they're only going to have one winery, aren't they? Where their barrels of wine are kept. Yeah, there'll, there'll be a, there'll be a store of wine. Yeah, yeah, sure. So in theory, I could actually either I could either use a well. There'll be a well. Or poison the wine casks. Or, I mean, are there poison gases we could use instead? Yeah, the other thing. Is just, yeah. If we can, get into the sewer, if we can get into the sewers, if we can, then there's nothing stopping us from sending poison gas up yeah. into each building. Wait for the dust to clear and then go in. Seems a lot simpler yeah. than going around trying to poison a wine a winery they may or may not use. Yeah, exactly. And you also have an 
the reality that the guys are sometimes we're in with so that they're, they're going to be too weak and, and we won't be affected by it. In fact, it doesn't need to be affected by that. Things to you, their voice, as to all of us. But um, I can definitely try to form a question. I'm not really getting any of that, Jay. Um, I was saying we could, if we could be quite positive, that is, we can at least get out there. I yeah. still can't hear. No. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll Strangely, we heard that. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I did create a poison gas and an antidote or an anti gas. <laughs> you can, you can I can that. hear you now. All oh, right, anti gas. Um, basically, meaning that we can. We can release gas as we're going through the sewers because we'll already have the antidote on ourselves. So the actual thing will be affecting people once we're there rather than having to wait or come back another time or whatever. It will be affecting people instantly. And the only person who really matters that they have got the anti-gas, if you like, would be, would be Cat. Because Cat's the magic user. The rest of us, it doesn't matter if you talk or not, really, does it? Any of that? Yeah, do you say Sorry, a gas that does what? That basically takes away the, the ability to talk. Making does them laugh. exist? It gives you something that just constricts the throat. Yeah, yeah it actually makes it difficult for them to communicate. If we have a sewer that we can send it up through the toilets and but but does it exist? I don't know. That's what we need to discover. I mean I've got a poisonous kit, so I've actually got the skills to do it. Um to make poisons and gases and stuff and antidotes. But whether that is something that is possible. Who knows? So this is when I look at my spell list and I see thunderclap and I think surely that's for making people inconvenienced. Thunderclap, oh, you know. Thunderclap could potentially deafen people. <laughs> I know, but it, it, it's a joke because thunderous clap. But anyway. Oh. <laughs> so. Okay. Right, it's ten past eleven. <laughs> Uh, do you want to come? I think he's saying, do we want to call it a night? It is going on. I think, Balin, you have the right idea, but the wrong mechanism. What if we just poison the food of the canteen? Before well, that's what I was saying about poisoning the wine barrels and people from hell. Not so much the wine barrels, but the food of the, the canteen for the Imperial Guard. If it was all mouldy. But we can't guarantee that they'll all, all, the, all the mages will eat from that canteen. That's the problem. Mages, but all the Imperial Guard would just be able to walk right up there, deal with the mages, and head out. Yeah, but the mages are a problem, aren't they? They're the ones with power. The problem if they know we're coming, but if they're our first encounter, they're not so much of a problem. Mm. Like, if the guards have alerted the mages, then that could be an issue. But if we deal with the majors before they know we're there. I mean, if we can sneak all the way up to the majors without them becoming aware of us, not a problem. Well, okay. Well, I mean, whatever, really, I suppose. I mean, we, a, we don't have to face a bunch of majors throwing enhanced balls at us. <laughs> I mean, don't be wrong, if such a gas exists, then great. Because uh, it does actually stop them raising the alarm as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, um, it's such a thing, though. I don't know, it's up to, it's up to the, 
the GM to decide whether he'll let you create such a thing and how difficult it will be to do that. I mean, there'll be an alchemist in the town. Mm -hmm. I can get all the supplies. It's um, worth it. it's worth a shot and it's worth investigating. Mm. Yeah. Um, I've, got, I've also got Mouse exploring as much of the Citadel as it can at the moment. So when I liaise with Mouse tomorrow, we can get hopefully some idea of the interior. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we can have some kind of plan for the actual yeah. day itself. Um, so if it takes us a few days to prepare this, I think that's fine. It's definitely worth investigating the, 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 the poison thing, if, if it can happen. Yeah, if we can shot quite a lot of mages, that would be quite happy, I think. Yeah, but if we can't do that, then I definitely think we should take out the kitchens of the Imperial Guard. If, if just a sickness happens to go through the kitchen, sorry, through the Imperial Guard, that's not going to be uncommon. No, no, it's not. Um... Yeah, off a shot. Mm. Okay. Yes. Well, it looks like we've lost Phil anyway, so... Uh... Mm. <laughs> I think he was saying goodnight for a while, but we couldn't hear him. <laughs> yeah, I was just checking to see if he'd sent him another message, but he hasn't. Oh, he, he sent one to the, the, the FB group. PC froze, no idea why. Oh, that was a few minutes earlier, but I was typing. Yeah, I'll just let him know we finished the adventure. Charles next week. There we go. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I think we've got a plan to try, and we'll just have to see what the GM allows stick. Sure. Yes. All right. So with that, shall we? Hear the broadcast. The stream for yeah. Thank you for bearing with. Seriously, look at a different tool next yeah. time. <laughs> Hopefully, next time we're better. All right, catch you next week. Yeah.